I went to Zimbabwe, Africa, and I met uh, a woman there. We had children. Are you with me? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Davis. Okay, we're going to take our next caller, and it's from California, and I guess the name is pronounced Nianzine. Nianzine, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, it's Nianzini, sorry. Nianzini, okay. How are you? Yeah, I'm wonderful. How are you doing? Doing good, good. Do you have a story to tell or a question to ask? What was that? Did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Um, a little bit of both, I guess. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's, uh, I'm having yeah, yeah, a little complications with my significant other regarding child custody mm -hmm. and uh, co-parenting. All right. What's the story there? Yeah. So the story is um, I actually had uh, two children abroad. I was born and raised in California. I went to Zimbabwe, Africa, and I met uh, a woman there. We had children. Um, and our firstborn was his name is Ruby Heaven in 2019, and then after, shortly after that, we had my daughter New Eden, and then we went we went to um, uh, we we got caught up in the whole COVID system. So in the midst of that while working on our um on her papers and my children's papers to get citizens i mean um visas to come over here it took a little more time than expected so just going through all that and you know being new parents and just uh getting hit with this whirlwind i think it also affected our relationship and our planning and things like that so i had uh, a case to deal with in California and my passport was missing so I couldn't go without I mean I couldn't um, continue living there without having a, a passport and means to travel in, in, the, in the case of emergency so what I what I agreed with my partners that I go to California come back here handle my situation and then in that time, she'll be handling her uh, visas and, and uh, the likes of the, that sort. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere along the translation, something happened to where we weren't on the same page anymore. Mm -hmm. So now it's been about a year. This was February 13th. I, I, I came back February 13th last year. So somewhere along that line, something happened to where we're not in good terms. Mm -hmm. So... I've been trying to ask her, like, okay, what what um, arrangements do you think are best for us to have a both healthy uh, co-parenting relationship? And she um, she hasn't been uh, forthcoming in the answer. So um, I'm uh, kind of in a, a situation because I grew up without a father, and it affected me in a lot of ways from poor judgment that could have just been um, guided strongly with a, a father figure. My mom was always at work. So I'm haunted by the fact that I'm leaving my, uh, I, I don't want to leave my, uh, even though we're not in good terms or speaking, she's a great person. I just think she doesn't understand my life or, you know, just you know, never doing something for the first time is, is pretty hard because her situation was also hard. She grew up without parents and things like that. So I just need some guidance, some help, not to get anyone in trouble, but to make sure these kids don't suffer from our our um, misunderstandings and things like that, and get the best out of me and and their mother. All right. Well, is CPS but now involved? the situation is over. What was that? Is CPS involved in your situation at all? No, they're not. 
Okay. Um, have you gone to like family court to try to resolve this or seen a counselor or a marriage counselor, or a couples counselor, anything like that? No, I haven't done any of that. I'm seeking advice on which way to go right now. Okay. So what I would suggest, and I'm just guessing at your age, you sound like you're a young man. Uh, what I would suggest is you go talk to a counselor and have him or her make some, you know, professional recommendations on what you should and shouldn't do, you know, with respect to custody okay. and visitation. Okay. Uh, but the situation is kind of hard uh, and not because she's not really on cooperating terms with, with uh, what I'm suggesting. So in terms of a counselor, when she's in, not in the country, I don't know how that would help me. Are the children in the country? No, they're not, but they're American citizens. Okay. So one of the things that I still suggest is you um, is talk, talk to an individual counselor and also perhaps talk to a lawyer about starting some type of legal proceedings to protect your rights with respect to custody and visitation. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. You know, I appreciate you calling. Um, and it's pronounced Nizini. Nianzini. Nianzini. Listen, it's like almost like it's Chinese. All right. Well, listen, I, I appreciate you calling in. I appreciate you listening to the show. Maybe call us back in about three or four weeks and let us know what's going on with your case, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Georgia? Yes, I'm here. Um, had you talked to this gentleman before? Yes, we spoke yesterday, as a matter of fact, last okay. night. Because he was indicating yes. that CPS was not involved in his case. Yes, um, CPS was not involved in his case. Um, however, he was um, interested in speaking with you about the family's law side of the case. Okay. And, um, and um, he wanted to call the radio show. Okay, very good. You know, um, you hear any interesting stories this past week? regarding CPS and involvement with families? Um, yeah, CPS a lot, uh, unfortunately. Um, last, uh, actually a couple of days ago, I received a call from a nurse. Um, one of the, so what happened was there was a child born and there was another um, nurse that works with her on the same shift. She said, my sister can't have children and I want that baby for her. So they tried to set the mother up to fail, obviously, and say that there was some kind of drugs in the mother's urine. And she reported her to the supervisor in the hospital. And to get back at her, she contacted CPS against her and her daughter. And it was very unfortunate um, because CPS took her baby from her under false allegations of abuse and domestic violence. Has she been between to court? her and her husband. Has she been she to hasn't court? been to court yet. It just happened like a couple of days ago. Hmm. Just one yeah. child involved or more than one? Yes, one child involved. Her daughter is three and a half years old. And um, it's actually local in California. I'm not going to say the county um, because she is thinking about hiring her office to handle the case for her. I see. Well, yeah. Um, I hope that we can help her. That's always tough situations, these situations where people um, allege that social workers have made false claims, you know, yes. about abuse or domestic violence, you know, that type of thing. Yes, but the thing about it is, Mrs. Davis, is that anybody can call and make allegations of false, um, you know, just anyone can call and they just take their word for it. However, and family law court hearsay doesn't work, but with CPS hearsay is is accepted. That that doesn't make sense to me. Without the proper investigations, well, they just take anybody's word for it. Well, here's the thing, you know, um, you bring up a very interesting point about here's two minutes family law and CPS courts. CPS courts, in, at least in California, have a special exemption. They are allowed to listen to hearsay, or judges are allowed to listen to hearsay 
brought by the social workers. Now, the parents have a defense to that. They can, you know, subpoena in that hearsay declarant to come to court to be cross-examined. But, you know, California has made this ex special exception. And I think if you want hearsay to be excluded from CPS courts, you know, people are going to have to vote or, you know, have laws passed to change that because unfortunately that is the law in California. Um, in, you know, uh, family law courts, hearsay is not accepted uh, and is generally inadmissible. But, you know, if your family law court and CPS courts are totally different things. They're night and day, right? Yes. People will always call and think that they're, you know, related. Um, and I guess in some ways, in the end, they can be related, but they're two different courthouses, two different courtrooms, different judges, different locations, different laws, you know, that apply. There are family law uh, rules and laws, and there are CPS laws and rules, and they're just different, fortunately. Or no, I, yeah. One minute. And I... I, I to call you i had to explain the difference and and, and i didn't know before that juvenile dependency um supersedes any family order from family law courts meaning if they go and take your child and you have a full custody of your child that doesn't matter once cps takes over then juvenile is involved and that supersedes any family law order Correct. so what i tell people is the following once there's an investigation going oh Oh, I'm sorry for butting in, Georgia, but the engineer is telling me we've got to take another break. This is The Secret, okay. How to Fight CPS and Win. We'll be right back after these messages. 